gentlemen, and welcome to Dirty Headlines, episode 10, part number three, right here on No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast. Your Canadian wrestling podcast to talk about the Dirty and No Holds Barred, and anything we say, pun intended. You can follow the podcast on Twitter, at No Holds Barred WP. You can follow myself at Real Kyle Masters, or you can follow my clothes at Corporate Tappy on Twitter as well. If you want to follow us on Instagram, No Holds Barred WP is where you can find us on there. If you want to listen to us on the go, iTunes, Spreaker, and Stitcher Radio is where you can find us. Spreaker is a glorious podcast app that's available for all Android and Apple devices. It is free to download, free to make a profile, and you can listen to all previous episodes of the podcast. And better yet, you can chat with us live on the air when we are live on the Lowdown Show. If you want to watch any video versions of the podcast, youtube.com slash NHBWR is where you can find us on there. You can see 2K content, unboxings, and all video versions of the podcast and more. So hit that subscribe button, that bell icon for all upload updates. I am your host, the self-proclaimed greatest host of WWE Headlines, Kyle Masters. And guys, welcome to part number three of uh, the news and rumors show right here on the Holds Bar Wrestling Podcast. Guys, not a big news show for part number three today. I tried to get as much news as I could, um, but I think I have a total of five articles today with one big one being the uh, main story of WWE planning a 100,000-seat arena. In, or sorry, event in Australia this year. So that is a big, big news, and I got some uh, opinions on that. I got some more details. I know you're sick of hearing it, but uh, I got some more details on the release of the evidence against Roman Reigns and the steroid scandal. I got some big plans for WrestleMania 35 already, and we have uh, Rey Mysterio and in, uh, reportedly injured. Apparently he's uh, got a torn rotator cuff, so I got some news about that. And still, and our, sorry, the final news of Derby still t- teasing a twist. For Oscar at WrestleMania 34. So those are all the news articles I have for you guys today, uh, right here on WWE Headlines. So before we get into anything like that, um, let's get the sponsors out of the way, guys. Go check out uh, WrestleRumble.com, guys. They do an awesome pick 'em contest. Um, they do one almost every pay per view, and especially this month, there's a big one for Fastlane. Um, you guys don't want to miss that. Uh, it's uh, this year's uh, Frost Lane contest is the first place prize of any championship belt of your choosing from the list they have on their website at WrestleRumble.com, and you get 50 MVP points for that. If you win second to fifth place, you get just 50 MVP points. Sixth to tenth gets 45. 11th to 15th gets 40, and 16th to 20 get 35. They have their own MVP system, and it's all explained on WrestleRumble.com, and go follow them on Twitter at WrestleRumble. Also, guys, go check out Collar and Elbow, the wrestling brand. They do a fantastic clothing brand. Uh, wrestling uh, based design and it's uh, it's not there to be shop related so it's its own it's its own brands its own thing it is actually run by none other than former dare to be superstar Al Snow and I'm told that the hoodies are really really comfortable I'm in the process of ordering one actually right now so go check them out www.collarandelbowbrand.com and I have a promo code for you guys to use on behalf of Jumbo Ref one two three on Twitter. He's given us a promo code to use for you guys and his promo code Jumbo on checkout and you save ten percent on your order and lastly but not least www.extremewrestlingshirts.com guys they specialize in pro wrestling and mma apparel with over 50,000 t-shirts sweatshirts costumes dvds and pendants in stock with free shipping to usa and canada as you heard that right free shipping all you have to do is pay for the item itself and the shipping is on them if you are living in the rest of the world you have to buy three items and then shipping is free but once you take a look at the website you're going to want to buy eight ten more items it is a fantastic website, guys. I've ordered multiple shirts from this website, so go check them out, ExtremeWrestlingShirts.com. I'm trying to work on a, getting a promo code for you guys for that website, too, um, for you guys can save on the checkout as well on your items. So bear with me while I go through that. I'm in the, I'm in the process. I'm in the email works, if uh, that makes any sense, with uh, Extreme Wrestling Shirts. So, um, Other than that, let's get into the news. Without further ado, we'll start off with the big topic of Dare to be planning a 100,000 seed event. What is that all about? Let's find out. The Dare to be superstars may be heading down under later this year as a huge pay-per-view is set to be hosted in Australia. Fox Sports and other sources have reported this. So this is uh, not just uh, through the, uh, the, the dirt sheets. This is actually from actual legit news sources. Um, if the event takes place, it could be uh, a record-setting spectacle with one of the largest audiences to attend a pay-per-view or sports event in general. The recent move of one of WWE's planned pay-per-views seems to suggest that Australia event will take place on a particular date, too. Here are the latest rumors on that uh, event from Melbourne, Australia, later this year. A Fox Sports report cites an article from the Herald Sun, which is currently available to members 
uh, only for reading. So this article says Fox Sports mentions that the event is being planned for Melbourne Cricket Ground. If you guys don't know what that stadium looks like, go and Google it. It's a huge arena. Uh, a deal is expected to be signed by the Visit Victoria Tourism Group soon, and an official announcement will be made during WrestleMania 34 in New Orleans, Louisiana, on Sunday, April 8th. So during WrestleMania is where they're going to make this big announcement, so that's pretty interesting. Um, if the event goes down, an estimated crowd of 100,000 people. Yes, 100,000. You heard that right. Not a, not a, I don't think that's a fixed number because we know how there would be love to say they broke the attendance record and ended up not being 100,000. I think that was two WrestleManias ago. Yeah, I think it was 32, they said, and it ended up being just like, sorry, excuse me, it ended up being just like 80-something thousand. I don't know. Um, but it would be an estimated crowd of over 100,000 fans could be in attendance to witness the pay-per-view. The speculative date uh, for when this event will be held is during the weekend of October 6th and 7th after WWE's Hell in the Cell date, which was recently moved from October 1st to September 17th. So since it was moved, it looks like they're making room for this pay-per-view. So maybe it's uh, apparently going to go down. Um, it's believed that the WWE event in Australia will follow up the big AFL Grand Final being held there as well. Um it's mentioned that some major star power will be needed in order to sell the event and, a, and to pack the venue, or to pack yeah to pack the venue. Uh, some of the names already being mentioned, in, including ring legends The Undertaker, uh, maybe just as an appearance, I highly doubt he'll have a match. Um, and Ray Mysterio, or Mysterio is a likely candidate. John Cena, obviously, and recent WWE signee Ronda Rousey. Uh, so far, there have been no confirmed superstars for this event since it's a speculative date, and so far, off. And WrestleMania 34 hasn't even taken place yet. Uh, still, if these rumors uh, prove to be true and the event takes place in Australia, uh, it will be an, another coup for the WWE in terms of gaining more worldwide exposure. The company has worked to bring in more international stars lately and is looking to feature Japanese stars uh, such as Shinsuke Nakamura and Asuka in major matches at this year's WrestleMania 34. The company recently released one of their few Australian stars, Emma, but continues to scour the globe for new talent uh, for the ring. I know there's a lot of NXT stars that are from Australia, so hopefully they'll be brought up by that time, or they plan on doing it, um, a.k.a. Peyton Royce and uh, Billy Kay. WWE has done live events in other countries before, with England and Canada being the main locations for Raw and SmackDown shows recently. The WWE has also hosted a few pay-per-views in Canada with Survivor Series 1997 among the most favorite, or the most famous due to the Montreal Screwjob. And the one, okay, I was going to talk about it. I was going to say, if they're going to forget the one that I went to, then okay, or me and Cappy went to. Um, the Survivor Series returned to Canada in 2016, there you go, with Goldberg versus Brock Lesnar headlining the event. The first official Royal Rumble pay-per-view also took place in Hamilton, Ontario, which is a good 45-minute drive from we are. Uh, those were big successes for WWE, and the various live tours overseas have also pointed to the popularity of WWE around the globe. However, one of the biggest events to take place in took place was in 1992 when WWE SummerSlam, not a lot of people know this, invaded Wembley Stadium in London, England. A crowd of 80,355 fans were reported for the event and is considered the fourth largest audience at, at, to attend a WWE event in history. Um, if the WWE event takes place at MCG in Australia and sells out, the 100,000 fans or so would rival the WrestleMania 32, which had a quote-unquote 101,763 fans which is complete bullshit. We know that wasn't true. Um, fans should expect to hear more about the pay-per-view taking place in the coming weeks with WrestleMania 34, the potential date for the major announcement. I think they'll probably do it after. I highly doubt they'll do it on the day of. I think their main focus is they want... The main focus should be on WrestleMania 34 itself. You don't want to deprive anything away from that. Um, I think you should do it on Raw. The Raw after or two weeks after. I, I, to me, it's, just, it's, it's too much for that weekend, especially like uh, announcing a big event like that and Australia getting this massive pay-per-view over 100,000 fans. I don't even know what they're going to do. It's just going to be called like WWE Live from Australia or going to be called Down Under or <laughs> something stupid. I know they're, we've seen what these cre new creative pay-per-views have been like over the years, aka Great Balls of Fire. So we can only imagine what this one's going to be called. I guarantee you it's going to be something to do with Down Under. I, I guarantee it. You heard it here first, ladies and gentlemen, but... That's pretty cool. To me, though, it's like on the other side of this fence here, it's like, okay, they have a problem booking arenas with this brand split and having single branded pay per views. They have a problem filling these arenas and just filling regular pay per views, anyways. And they, they have problems with attendance. Yet they want to go and do a 100,000 seat arena. To me, it's like, 
I'm not, I'm not really sure what they have planned here. I don't know if there's that much interest in Derby in Australia. I haven't really like gone and looked into it. Maybe there is. Maybe there's not. Maybe it'll be a lot of people to fly down there that weekend for this event if it's big enough. Again, like they said, they need to bring in some high or big names or even promote matches months in advance for this event. If you're going to promote this thing to be a 100,000 seat arena, you need to start booking matches like now or the next month to to get to gain hype for this. Or maybe by June or July, you should have a couple of matches already booked for that and then build towards that. Um, and it sucks because SummerSlam is right in between, so that'd be really tough to do unless they did it right after SummerSlam. But then that's not really not enough time to sell out. I think you're going to have to do travel packages for this thing maybe because you, you think about it. It's all the way in Australia, and if people want to go down there to experience this event and be in that 100,000-seat venue, they're probably going to have to offer travel packages. And they, that's probably why they're, this article is saying they're going to make the announcement sometime soon, maybe at WrestleMania, so it gives people time to buy these travel packages or save up for these travel packages. So I don't know. It's it's going to be very interesting what they do with this. Um Again, though, I'm all for, and I'm not really going to stay negative on this. I'm all for a hundred uh, thousand seat arena uh, and event doing like that, and, and trying to make a history marker there. Good for them. Good for you, Australia fans, to experience there to be live, especially a big event like that. And I hope it actually becomes a big event, like not a yearly thing, but I hope it actually is a big enough event. It's not just one of those things where, like, you remember that we went to Tokyo. And they did that Beast from the East crap. And to me, it was an okay event. It wasn't the greatest event, but it was an okay event. I think they have to do something way better than this. This has got to be like big four pay-per-view level if they're going to do something like that, especially in a 100,000-seat event. So, very interesting. Let me guys, let me know what you guys think about that. And uh, I want to hear some creative names out there. What would you name this pay-per-view in Australia? Let me know down in YouTube comments below or on Twitter at NoHoldsBarredWP. <clears throat> Okay, I had to clear my breath there. Um, throat, sorry, throat. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I know you guys are tired of this news, but uh, it, it came out and literally I needed to fill the new sheet today. But uh, more details on the release of evidence against Roman Reigns in the steroid scandal. We are all sick and tired and just waiting for this to happen. I got some news on when it could potentially drop. Uh, filmmaker John Bravo, who is making a documentary about currently jailed steroid dealer Richard Rodriguez, is set to release a home or his movie soon. A YouTube channel that goes by the name of Heal by Nature has released a video which features comments by the filmmaker on the alleged involvement of Roman Reigns and other WWE superstars with the WFN. John Bravo stated that he was filming the last parts of the movie and that he'll be and have it reviewed by his attorneys. He also added that he would have to hide after the movie is released and it would be tough and it was tough investigating someone else's claims. The YouTube video also adds some other information which could be shocking. For the WWE universe, the video claims that there is evidence that there is evidence that a WWE legend placed an order worth one million four hundred thousand dollars in steroids. Holy crap! <laughs> it adds to that the documentary will also reveal information about the current and former stars that were connected to the WFN. The evidence will also contain information such as tracking details, phone numbers, and other records. Order records. Um, in an earlier interview with Hannibal TV, John Bravo stated the wellness, uh, fitness nutrition, which is WFN, um, had over 14,000 clients that included athletes, celebrities, and even members of Congress. Bravo also clarified that he was not targeting Roman Reigns, but was doing a specific video on him because he denied knowing Rodriguez and the WFN as reported by Wrestling Inc. So... This is not just John Bravo picking on Roman Reigns. As much as a lot of people out there want to say that he's just doing it to pick on Roman Reigns because of uh, what else, what was going on in an IWC with Roman Reigns and him getting the hate from fans and people saying that people should just accept Roman Reigns and yada, yada, yada. Um, he's not just targeting Roman Reigns. He's targeting a lot of people. As you heard there, there's people, there's different athletes, there's different celebrities. Uh, he's mentioned Mark Wahlberg, uh, one of the famous actors that's involved in this. And now he's saying members of Congress as well. So he's not just picking Roman Reigns, but because Roman Reigns, saying because Roman Reigns came out and said that he denied these claims and denied even knowing Rodriguez or the WFN, he's going to specifically make a specific video just for Roman. And I love that. If this guy is going to be, if, if Roman's going to be untrue here, and he's going to deny that he knew or did anything with this, and there's actually proof that he did, I will applaud John Bravo for doing this because I hate nothing more than a liar. And a lot of people out there will think that I'm just fucking picking on Roman Reigns because I hate Roman Reigns. I want the evidence to come out and, and be on Roman Reigns, and I'm, I'm wishing it upon this guy. No. I just want to know if he's lying or not. If he's lying, then I he deserves all the punishment he, he's, he deserves to get. 
You can't just lie and deny all these claims and there's actually like footage of him doing this or there's evidence of him buying steroids. That's cheating, right? <laughs> well, there, there has a wellness policy for a reason. You can't just not follow a wellness policy because you're the top guy in the, in the company. You know, it's got to be fair. So the filmmaker also added that a that it was possible for WWE to already know the details as they could be aware of the drug reigns, uh, the drugs reigns failed in the testing. However, as of this writing, it appears plans for Roman Reigns to face Brock Lesnar in WrestleMania 34 were still in motion. Notably, WWE has invested a lot of time and effort in pushing Reigns to face against Lesnar, heading into the biggest show of the year. Yeah, we'll see what happens if this <laughs> this this information comes out and appears to be true. Because, Roman, you're in trouble, buddy. Um, while WWE may not be opening or be openly admitting it, reports do indicate that the officials might be preparing for the worst. Braun Strowman was pulled from the singles match at WWE event uh, as WWE wants to have him as a backup plan. If a lot of damaging evidence is revealed, it could bring down R- Roman Reigns uh, even before he was crowned as the guy at WrestleMania by defeating Brock Lesnar. C- guys had, like, three coronations. If we didn't... If we weren't made to think that he's the guy, then I don't know what the hell Darby's was trying to do with him. It is ridiculous. It remains to be seen what type of evidence is released and whether it will be released before WrestleMania 34. And I, in either case, it appears that after the biggest show of the year, Roman Reigns would either <laughs> would be either where Darby wants him to or <laughs> where a majority of fans want him to be. Um, again, I'm not a guy that's trying to wish it upon him, but if the evidence is there and it's all clear-cut evidence, then I think he deserves the proper punishment. He should not go unpunished just because he's the guy that he's pushing down our throats, even though he's not the guy we want. I mean, he has been... You can't deny that he's been handed everything. You can't. No one can sit here and tell me that this guy's worked hard. This guy was picked out of the performance center as soon as he entered it. Like, his first love was football. Like, he, he didn't love the Derby at first. He didn't want to grow up being a wrestler. He wanted to grow up playing in the NFL. And you have other guys who worked their fucking asses to the bone for just getting some, some mic time or, or some um, show time and getting over with the fans who are getting pushed aside because Roman has just handed everything. He's got handed already like four coronations so far. Why do we? Why does he need to keep having more? It doesn't make any sense. And it, it, go, it goes back to what I said. The definition of insanity is trying something over, the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. Derby is expecting a different result as in the crowd reaction to change to Roman Reigns. That will never happen. That is done, WWE. You have to stop this. You have to stop thinking in the back of your heads that eventually the fans will change. It's over. They will not never, ever change on Roman Reigns. It will never happen. And there are a lot of people there going, oh, that's the reaction they're expecting. At least he's getting a reaction. No. He's being. It doesn't make. It's the reaction doesn't make sense though. He's being pushed as a baby face, but getting a heel like a full heel reaction, it doesn't make any sense. It, it's not the the type of WWE logic that they want. They want Roman Reigns to get get cheered. As much as they want to tell you, it's just looking for a reaction. They want him to be a baby face. They want him to get that reaction. Look what they tried. They tried to bring back the shield just to get that baby face reaction, and they fucked that up. So. As much as you think out there, you know what everybody's doing with Roman. You really have to step outside the box and take a look at it from the outside and see the big picture here. Um, so that is that with the whole Roman Reigns evidence thing. Hopefully, we get a video soon so we can just finally clear this up and forget about it if it's not true and just move on. Uh, next bit of news: some big plans for WrestleMania 35 already. Yeah, next year's WrestleMania. They're already talking about some big plans. So here are those big plans. This year, the WWE seems intent on having Roman Reigns battle Brock Lesnar in the main event at WrestleMania 34. The company started out to uh, start out the plan one year ago when Paul Heyman planted the seed, and the company then went on Monday Night Raw this week and had Reigns cut a worked shoot promo against Lesnar for not showing up at the event. An attempt to make fans want to cheer Roman, but guess what? It didn't work. The last thing the WWE wants is to end a WrestleMania event with fans booing. Yeah. Too bad it's, that's what's going to happen if you have this as the main event. I don't think they know that the WrestleMania crowd is going to shit all over this match. They got to look back at that WrestleMania 20 match. I say this like a broken record. And what happened when the fans knew that Lesnar was leaving. They knew that Goldberg was leaving. This year, they know Lesnar's leaving. They know Roman's obviously going to win the title. They're going to shit all over this match. And I'm going to be part of that crowd. And I'm going to shit all over this match. <laughs> Anyways, um... Which might be one of the reasons they are testing John Cena getting into the world title pi- picture match to offer an alternative when lining up the show. However, Slice Wrestling has been 
or has some big rumors on WrestleMania 35 that could make history for the WWE concerning the possible event on next year's show. Uh, over the last few years, the WWE was or has worked hard to promote the women's revolution, starting with Charlotte Flair, Sasha Banks, Becky Lynch joining the main roster, and they have made history along the way. As a matter of fact, the WWE has been loud and proud about making history using the word history every time they do something new. I'm actually sick and tired of them saying that. Like, no, new history, first time ever breaking match. It's been, it's getting stale now. <laughs> Dirty made history when Sasha Banks, history. So, <laughs> when Sasha Banks and Charlotte Flair wrestled in the first ever Women's Hell in the Cell match. Uh, those two women also wrestled in the first ever Women's Iron Man match. They main evented Monday Night Raw for the first time ever. Women, <laughs> uh... To wrestle the first time they wrestled or a woman wrestled a main event on Raw since Trish Traz and Alita. This year, the first ever women's Royal Rumble match took place, and they followed it up with the first ever Elimination Chamber match involving women. God, that was a lot of first time ever's there, making my head hurt. <laughs> um, now, 2019 might give us the fir- their final first as they have a chance to main event WrestleMania 35. There was a chance that WWE could have made history once again at WrestleMania 33. The original rumors indicated that Ronda Rousey would team up uh, with a mystery partner to battle Triple H and Stephanie McMahon, and they could headline WrestleMania this year. They likely won't. Uh, this likely won't, or that likely won't happen. Even when Triple H fought Sting, it was in the middle of the WrestleMania card, and it seems that even Triple H knows it's better to have full-time talent headline the show. That's why Hunter is a great wrestling mind, which is why Roman Reigns is likely to get the call this year. Well, we'll see. Uh, if the Derby wants to make history with the women in the main event at WrestleMania for the first time ever, they don't want to be lip service with one of the owners of the company and a brand new star possibly wrestling in her first match. Um, the best person to put in this spot is Charlotte Flair, who has wrestled in almost all previous first ever matches for the women, according to Slice Wrestling. The Derby rumors are that a triple threat match at WrestleMania 35 could headline the show involving the top woman in the company, Charlotte Flair, and the most dominant female wrestler working with Asuka and former UFC champion Ronda Rousey. So a triple threat match involving Flair, Asuka, and Rousey. Uh, Of course, WrestleMania 34 is still a month away, and that makes WrestleMania 35 over a year away. With that in mind, many things can change, but this would give the women a chance to reach their final landmark match, and and there might not be a better group of women than those three to headline the show. The WWE uh, set this up at the Royal Rumble this year when Ronda Rousey made her big WWE debut. She stood in the ring with Charlotte Flair, Asuka, and Alexa Bliss and pointed at the WrestleMania sign like a bunch of times while Alexa was there too. It was Asuka, Charlotte that made eye contact with Rousey and it could all lead them to a main event at WrestleMania 35. I could see them doing this. Uh, they're all about the first time ever lately. They could do a main event at WrestleMania 35. You're going to really have to sell me on that. Not sure if I do a whole John Cena rock build where you, you plan it for a year in advance, but I definitely put Oscar in there. Charlotte, Ronda, to me, it's you're gonna have she's gonna have to have a big year this year in order to be in that spot. Depending on how they push her, the only way I see her getting into that match is if she wins the Royal Rumble next year, the women's one, which is probably going to happen. Um, if not, then I'd keep Oscar and Charlotte in there. Um, they could either go one on one. I'd love to see a one on one between Oscar and Charlotte for the main event. I think a lot of people would if they don't do that this year. If not, do a triple threat between Charlotte, Oscar, and Sasha Banks. Uh, I can't really think of anyone else that go into that spot. Um, a Bailey's there, maybe uh, a Becky Lynch. Like they could easily do a lot of things here with the if they want to do a women's run, uh, WrestleMania WrestleMania thirty five main event. So. I'm on the fence about it. Yes, I like it. No, I obviously don't like it. There will probably be other matches by then that could definitely top that. But if they are planning a WrestleMania 35 main event, they need to go over the top for this. It can't be a lackluster one. It can't leave the fans, uh, you know, with a sour taste in their mouth, leaving going, that was really the main event. Like, I paid all this money to see that in the main event. It's got to go over the top. So, I don't know. I'm on the fence about it. You guys let me know what you guys think out there of the rumored Rousey uh Oscar and Charlotte triple threat for next year, or how would you guys book it? Let me know how you would book a, a women's main event in WrestleMania 35 next year down YouTube comments below or at no holds barred WP. So I got a little bit of news here. Some, uh, it's a really, really short article. It's just, uh, with some rumors about, uh, Rey Mysterio. Apparently he's reportedly he's injured. Uh, there have been a ton of rumors flying around that about Rey Mysterio joining WWE over the past week or so. We've had some, uh, we have some bad news to pass along. Rey Mysterio was reportedly injured this past weekend. 
Uh, Dave Meltzer on F4W Online reports that Rey Mysterio suffered an injury at the Northeast Wrestling Show this weekend. Meltzer says that it is believed that Rey has torn his left bicep. Oof, that's not good for the uh, Justin Barrasso quote-unquote WrestleMania match between him and Cena. <laughs> Looks like that's crapped already. Let's see what you got, Justin Barrasso. Uh, according to the report, those who saw Ray backstage after the match say they were they there was heavy swelling on his left arm. Meltzer doesn't have any more details other than Ray believes to be have torn his muscle in his uh, bicep region. Uh, this obviously comes at a terrible time for Ray. He was rumored to be in a serious negotiations with WWE. He's also scheduled to wrestle J- uh, Jushin Thunder Liger at an upcoming Strong Style event, and that's probably going to be canceled if he does have a torn bicep. If you guys remember, who re- who recent WWE or NXT star had a torn bicep, uh, Drew McIntyre, and you see how long he's been out for. So if this indeed is a torn bicep, then for sure Ray Mysterio is nixed for that Jushin Thunder Liger match, and he's nixed for any WrestleMania plans they had for him. But that being said, they could still negotiate terms with him for a WWE deal and be on 205 Live in a couple months after his injury is fully healed. I would still keep him around. That way we get a big boost for 205 Live. So I'll keep you guys updated on Twitter as I get more information about Ray Mysterio's injury. Um Last but not least, got some a little bit of news here to end the show off, guys. They're be still teasing a twist for Oscar at WrestleMania 34. On Monday Night Raw this past week, it appeared as if Darby was laying the groundwork for the Raw Women's Championship match at WrestleMania 34. Alexa Bliss mocked Oscar, and it looked like that was the match they were building towards for the event. Michael Cole in commentary even said that it looks like it will be Oscar versus uh, Alexa at the Grand Stadium Mall. He didn't even say looks like; he said is. Like I remember him saying that in commentary. I'm like, oh. Okay, way to go, Michael. Way to just give the give us the WrestleMania main event without Oscar actually doing so. I don't remember him saying looks like. So maybe, but according to this rumor mill, this may not be the the plan. If you are a follower of the Derby rumor mill, you know that there has been some buzz about Oscar potentially crossing over to SmackDown and facing Charlotte Flair at the event. Derby teased this happening on social media, apparently, saying that Oscar still hasn't made her decision. As of this writing, Charlotte is winning the poll, which asks fans who they want to see Asuka face. They should pick Charlotte here. No questions asked. you got to pick Charlotte. Um, you do not want to see Alexa Bliss and Asuka go ahead. That's not a WrestleMania-type main event. They need to pull the trigger on Asuka and Charlotte. These guys are going to almost steal the show. And it's, it's just a match everyone wants. You want, again, like I said before in the other episodes of Headlines this weekend... You want to have WrestleMania built over more than just one match. You want to keep the fans excited and and experiencing a good, long five-hour event. You want to keep us entertained with these good matches. You can't just focus on Roman and Brock. So I think they need to pull the trigger on Oscar and Charlotte. Give us that main event, or gave us that main event, uh, basically uh, talented matchup between those two for the women's championship. Have Oscar stay over on SmackDown, boost up that division after. or maybe she, I don't, I don't know how they, 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 they go from that after. Because right now, she, technically, she's a Raw star. And I don't know if they make a trade or something. I, I'm not sure. Um, but I think they should still do that type of match. Um, get, still give us Styles and Nakamura. you got to build this WrestleMania huge. Because Wrestle Kingdom always blows it out of the water every goddamn year. So you want to try to at least compete with that. Give us Asuka and Charlotte. And be done with it. And put Alexa against Nia Jax or whatever they want to do. I mean, it's tough. As much as I don't want Alexa Bliss to have a shitty match at WrestleMania, just to her against Asuka is definitely not the way to go this year. That's for sure. Um, other than that, guys, that's literally all the news that I have for this week. I'm sorry. I try to get as much news as possible. Really nothing leaked out Saturday night or Sunday morning here. Like, I, I tried my best, but... Uh, Thanks for tuning in, guys. Part 1 and Part 2 are also live on the channel. Go check those out. They're on YouTube, iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker. Uh, just uh, go give them a listen. Uh, pretty good stuff. I got some news about uh, the Derby uh, main event possibly being canceled with Roman and Brock and John Cena's current path to WrestleMania and a lot more stuff on there. So go check those out. Those are live everywhere right now. Uh, go check out all the sponsors, guys, as I mentioned at the beginning of the show. But other than that... That is going to wrap it up for Adore to Be Headlines, episode number 10, part number 3, right here on No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast, your Canadian wrestling podcast that talks about the Derby and No Holds Barred on anything we say, pun intended. You can follow the podcast on Twitter again, guys, No Holds Barred WP. You can follow myself at Real Kyle Masters, and you can follow my co-host at Corporate Cappy as well. If you want to listen to, the go- listen to us on the go, <laughs> iTunes, Stitcher Radio, and Spreaker. 
is where you can find us. Spreaker is a glorious podcast app that is available for all Apple and Android devices. It's free to download, free to make a profile, lets you chat with us live on the air, and lets you listen to all previous episodes of the podcast. If you want to watch any video versions of the podcast, youtube.com slash NHBWR, you can find us on there. You also get 2K content, unboxings, and other videos like that. So hit that subscribe button, that bell icon for all upload updates. I'm your host, the self-proclaimed greatest host of Dirty Headlines, guys. Have a good weekend, and we'll see you later this week for the Lowdown Show.